In this tutorial, I will walk you through the steps of downloading data from OpenStreetMaps for free. And before we get any further, in case if you didn't know, OpenStreetMap, which is commonly known as OSM, is basically a free and open geographic database updated and maintained by a community of volunteers via open collaboration. And while OSM can be useful as an interactive map for general navigation purposes and things like that, just like Google Maps, it actually stands out uh, due to its emphasis on user-generated content and accessibility of its massive underlying database. Now, one of the most uh, valuable aspects of OpenStreetMap is the vast amount of vector data it makes available to the public. Now, this includes detailed information on roads, water bodies, transportation stations, building footprints, hospitals, schools, and many other critical infrastructure. And uh, the users can download this data in various formats such as shapefiles or geojson files through a number of different uh, resource providers and one such provider that allows a smooth downloading of OSM data is Geofabric which is exactly what we are going to be using today in this tutorial. So even though this is the official website of OpenStreetMap which is openstreetmap.org we are actually going to download that data using Geofabric service provider which means we would have to head over to the official website of Geofabric, which is geofabric.de. Links given in the description below as well. And when you head over to this portal, you would be able to head over to a tab called Data over here. And from here, you can directly go to Downloads. And from here, you would be able to see the link to get to the server to download the data, which is download.geofabric.de. So you can just uh, click on that and that should take you to a page that looks like this. Now over here if you just place your mouse pointer over each region like this, you would be able to see that correspondingly on the interactive map that's shown on the right side of the screen, the corresponding area gets sort of highlighted. So let's say if you are interested in obtaining some data for the continent of Europe, however keeping in mind that you don't really need to download the data for the entire European continent. What you can do is after that you can just head over to basically the corresponding sub-region and in this case the sub-region happens to be the corresponding countries and in my case let's say if I'm interested in downloading some data for the city of Brussels in Belgium then I would have to select Belgium from here. As I told you guys since they allow us to download this data in a number of different formats if you're interested in getting the data directly in shapefile format, you can just click right over here on the row that's corresponding to Belgium. So I'm just going to click over here. After that, I'm just going to head over to my working folder and click save. So you can see that the file corresponding to Belgium, it's about 570 megabytes, which is not that bad, but depending on the size of the country, and depending on the availability of data, you can see that the file sizes actually vary quite a bit. So we're going to have to give it a couple of minutes uh, for the downloading process to take place. And once the downloading process is completed, you will get to see a zip file like this getting downloaded into your working folder. And if you happen to go ahead and open up this file, just like this, you would be able to see a bunch of different shape files which correspond to, as you can see over here, buildings, land use and points of interest, railways, traffic, transportation, waterways, quite a lot of things. So if you're using a GIS software like QGIS, you can directly navigate into this working folder. And even though this is a zip file as a whole, you could just still directly drag it and drop it over to the working space and you can start exploring those files. So I have opened up my QGIS window and after that I have gone into my working folder and right over here you would be able to see that zip file. Well, what I can do is I can even expand this from here and I would be able to get this sort of a drop down menu from which I could see what sort of files are in there. So to get started, I'm just going to drag this buildings polygon shape file. How do I know it's a polygon shape file? From this icon that's right in front of the file name, you can see that it's a polygon and 
this is of the type point and we have a couple of polyline type shape files as well so let's get started with this building footprints shape file and because it's going to generate the building footprints for the most part of Belgium it's going to be a little bit heavy so as you can see it's still loading and if I probably zoom into an urban city like this you can quite comfortably now start seeing the building footprints so for example you can see different blocks and in between those there should be roads running through and if I take the select tool or select features tool I would be able to make selections like this as you can see over here now this is actually a massive data set so so I'm just going to maybe deactivate it for the time being and after that let's see how this land use shapefile looks so you can see that it's actually again a bunch of different polygons and and if I probably right click and open up the attribute table which again might take quite a lot of time to load over here you can see what kind of a land use it demarcates we have parks industrial areas nature reserves residential areas forests recreational areas and so much more so let's deactivate that as well and similarly let's say if you want to import some point features for example let's say if I go and import this traffic shapefile so you can see again a bunch of different points now I might be able to open up the attribute table and figure out what kind of traffic related information this shapefile contains for example you can see there are motorway junctions traffic signals crossings and all sorts of things like that and uh, there's another one called transportation so let's explore that as well this probably might be things like yeah as I expected tram stations railway stations bus stops ferry terminals things like that and in addition to that we also have polyline type features for example let's say railways so if I drag that and drop it over here so that basically shows all the railway lines so you can see these are actually polyline type features connecting a number of different stations and running through the major cities so these are all railways you can even explore and see what kind of a railway line that happens to be so majority of it is actually the proper rail the proper railway tracks and along with that they also have included things like tram lines in this data set and in addition to that they also have a shapefile of the roads so that's going to be again another dense layer as you can see over here because because roads pretty much run everywhere so you would be able to see the roads just like this as well and if you're using a later version of QGIS you probably would be able to use an open street base map just to get a bit more clarity on the spatial reference by heading over to the bottom of this browser panel and uh, right over here under XYZ tiles you'd be able to access OpenStreetMap or if you prefer Google Satellite you could actually use that as well but I'm just going to use OpenStreetMap in this case just drag it and drop it and make sure that you place it as the bottom layer right here and now if you zoom in to let's say your desired area of interest you can see that basically all the information gets lined up properly now even if I go ahead and activate the building footprints which which was the very first shapefile that I imported so you can see that it pretty much corresponds to the building footprints accurately now since OpenStreetMap is a community driven project you probably might come across cases where things don't match up exactly 100% as they should be but uh, for the most part this is actually a pretty reliable data set that you can rely on for most of your tasks and before we wrap up if you just want to isolate the data corresponding to maybe only a defined area that interests you what you can do is you can actually perform a clip operation quite simply 
to get rid of all the unwanted data and only retain the data that you need. Now, in case if you're not sure how to do that, I'll just take a quick couple of minutes to show you how to do that as well. So first of all, do note that everything is in the coordinate reference system 4326, which is WGS 1984 geographic coordinate reference system. So if you're creating or defining a spatial area that interests you, you have to just make sure that that is also in the same spatial reference or in the same coordinate reference system. So the way to create or define a polygon to demarcate your area of interest is simply by heading over to your working folder, right click and go to new and shape file. From here, you would be able to give, give it a name. I'm just going to name it as area of interest and the geometry type is going to be polygon and quite important to make sure that this spatial reference or coordinate reference system matches the coordinate reference system of this OpenStreetMap data, which also happens to be the same. So after that, you can click OK and you can just double click that over here. And after that, all you have to do is just basically start defining your area of interest. So just for clarity, I'll get rid of, well, I'll deactivate the layers for the time being. And after that, I can click on this area of interest and toggle editing. And after that, I can simply go ahead and define the area of interest like this. I'm just going to randomly define an area of interest just for the sake of showing you guys how to do that. So there's no real significance in me demarcating this boundary. So let's just assume that this is my area of interest. Just put an ID number and click OK. So you can see that my area of interest is now defined. You can save the edits by clicking on this button and save the edits. I would like to maybe get rid of the fill color just so that I would be able to see the boundary of my area of interest quite clearly and, th and the things that fall within that. So after heading over to properties, you can select symbology and from here you can select simple fill. And under symbol layer type, you can go, go ahead and select outline simple line and maybe increase the thickness of this a bit and click apply. So now you can see we have defined our area of interest. And after that, let's just assume that from this building footprints massive shapefile, I'm just going to cut out just the buildings that are falling within my area of interest. So to do that, all you have to do is just perform a clip operation by heading over to vector and you can go to geoprocessing tools and from here you can select clip. So your input layer is actually going to be the layer that's going to get clipped. So that's this uh, GIS OSM buildings and it's going to get clipped by my area of interest. And after that you can select run. It might take a while just because of the massive size of the data set. And after that if you click close now you'd be able to see that just the buildings that fall within my area of interest got clipped, which is pretty handy now. You can see that the data set is not that heavy, just like what it used to be before. And similarly, let's say if you want to clip maybe another feature, for example, the railway lines, again, all you have to do is just to perform the same operation, vector, geoprocessing tools, clip, and this time it's going to be the railway lines, and it's going to get clipped by my area of interest. And now if you run, now you can see that we have the clipped railway lines. Well, the coloring might not be that appropriate, especially when it comes to how it stands out with the background map. So I'm just going to select a bit of a dark color like this and click apply. And now you can see how the railway lines got clipped. And along with the buildings, if I turn off the open street map, and turn off all the other layers as well. So these are all railway lines and these are my building footprints. Pretty handy, isn't it? So guys, with that, uh, we're going to wrap up this tutorial. I hope the instructions were clear and if you do have any questions, don't forget to add a comment down below. And if you do appreciate us taking our time to share these valuable tutorials with you guys, 
You can always show your support by hitting that like button. I'll see you guys again with another tutorial soon.